So hello and welcome back to my C++ tutorial playlist and in this video we will take a look at C++ coroutines. Coroutines were introduced in C++ 20 and to get the gist across right from the beginning, coroutines are just functions that can be paused and resumed and you can pause them with co-yield or co-await and at the end of a coroutine function, you can also use coreturn as an irregular function to end the coroutine, and that will also suspend it again. And to get a very quick example on why they are useful, this is a coroutine function. Here is the first little trap you can fall into because online a lot of the times this return type is also called a coroutine and also this function is called a coroutine so i will just get distinguish these two by calling this the coroutine function and this the coroutine return type and yeah but just as an example here we can wait on another coroutine and this is a non-blocking call this will just suspend this when the start download is done. We will then execute here again and resume this coroutine here and also wait here on the save that would otherwise also be a blocking call and so on and so forth. And this is relatively elegant because before we had coroutines, we would have to handle this with callbacks. And as you, as you would assume, here we would then start download. We would need to pass in callback function that would then call save to file. And that would then in return would again need to get a callback function that would then return us the data. So that is really tedious and can be really ugly. Here is a small JavaScript example I found online. Uh, as you can see, we, when we pass a lot of Corbex functions in here, we get this pattern here. And as I see it, coroutines could become a replacement for callbacks. Um, one thing to note here about coroutines is that they are asynchronous, but they don't have anything to do with threading and thus also not um, anything with parallel programming. They the examples we've seen in the previous video, they were as asynchronous and also parallel, but here nothing happens in parallel. It's just an elegant way to write callbacks, so to speak. And in future videos, we will see how we can handle parallelism with coroutines separately with worker threads, for example. Now back to coroutines. Um, coroutines, the concept, uh, is relatively simple, but the implementation in C++ is very flexible and thus not too simple. But to break it down, uh, we always have a function that either uses co-await, co-yield, or co-return. And using any of these turns the function into a coroutine. And also a coroutine must have a special return type that defines a promise type. And that promise type and that promise type lets us define how interactions with the coroutines are handled. If it's, for example, what happens when we resume the coroutine, when we start the coroutine, uh, does it run automatically? Is it well? Is it lazily executed? And so on and so forth. We will take a look at that shortly. And there can also be awaitables that are returned by the promise type for various functions. And these are just things that you can call co-await on. And there are also two awaitables already, which are uh, suspend always and suspend never. And so far, these are all awaitables I needed so far. And thus, they, I won't cover them here in this video. I might maybe come back to how to write your custom awaitables in a future video. But so far, I didn't need it, so I won't cover them. And also um, you can have a handle in your return type. And this is usually always defined as coroutine handle and then the promise type. And this just gives us a handle to the promise type where we can access the promise and other things from, uh, from within the promise type. But let's take a look at a practical example so you can get a better feeling for it. Here, for example, we have a practical example of a generator. We already have a generator defined in the standard library called SD generator. 
but this is a simplified example of how you would do it yourself. First, it needs to define the promise type. I have forward declared it here. We will take a look at the next slide how the promise type looks like. Usually you would define it right in here, but um, for lack of space on this slide, I have just forward declared it here. And as you can see here, we have declared a handle type and here we then have a handle to our coroutine, to our promise type. And we can see here that we can then uh, control that promise type with the handle. For example, here under the structure, we can uh, destroy, call destroy on it. And we can also ask if it's done and can call resume on it, from, resume on it. And we can also access its promise and access the value that is defined inside of the promise type. Um, so let's take a look at the promise type real quick. The promise type would be defined as something like this. We always need to define these functions here. This, this is the bare minimum that we can have. And so let's get through it step by step. Here we can get the return object that just returns a handle, a coroutine handle. Uh, and here is the initial suspend that returns suspend always. So suspend always. Let's say we want to suspend the coroutine upon uh, starting it. So this is the function that is uh, the method that is called right at the beginning at the start of the coroutine when we kick it off. And here is just an initializer list that um, initializes this suspend always. So we just return suspend always. Final suspend gets called when we are done with our coroutine and we also want to suspend there. What happens when we yield a value out of our coroutine? We would like we would also like to suspend um, the coroutine and in here we uh, want to set our current value to the value that we have just yielded from within the coroutine function. When our coroutine function returns void, we can just um, define the function return void here. Otherwise, we would need to define another function. I think it was a return value. Then here, the last function that we need to define is unhandled exception. And this gets called when an exception is raised in our coroutine. And here we need to specify how we want to handle it. And in this case, we will just want to terminate our application if there was an unhandled exception. So how would we use this in our coroutine function? In our coroutine function, we can see we just have the generator as a return type and pass in int as a type, the template type here to generate ints. And here we just have a simple for loop from two and then we just yield values. So our we pass in the value um, i. So let's say one, for example, we would then here get this value in our current value would be set here and then we would get it out when we call next on our coroutine that we get back in our main application using next this returns an optional and we can see that we access the promise here and then go inside of that promise to uh, receive the current value as said, it's a little bit, the framework is a little bit complicated, but if you practice a little bit with it, it it's not too hard. Also, this um, is usually code that you write an abstraction for, maybe for a couple of coroutines that you need in your application, and then the usage of it is relatively simple. So in our main application, as we've seen here, we have our coroutine function, and we can use that here to get our generator back of type T. And then on our generator, we can call next all the time. And yeah, and that next returns an optional. So as long as the optional contains a value, we will output that value. Just to reiterate, here is the next function again on our generator that gets called. As long as our coroutine is not done, we will resume it and then our coroutine will yield a value and set the current value to the value we've just yielded. And we will return it here from our generator type. 
if our coroutine is done and uh, then we will return null pointer and the while will break in in here and yeah and that gives us a um, relatively easy way to generate numbers lazily i hope that makes sense so far so let's say to reiterate we always need to define a return type of class, let's call it x, in our case it was generator. And in that class we need to define the struct promise type and promise type must implement get return object, initial suspend, final suspend, return void or return value depending on if your coroutine returns a value or uh, it or not. In our case, we just yielded values, so we don't need to define return value, but return void. Then we need to define unhandled exception and what happens in the case of an unhandled exception. And then optionally, we also need to define yield value if our coroutine yields values. And after we have defined the return type, we also need to define a coroutine function that returns that return type and with that with these two pieces we then have find a coroutine and also because this is really important i've seen this a lot is don't mix those two together you really need two separate things one is a return type and another thing is the coroutine function but often coroutines um, alike so both of them are often called coroutines in online references so that can be a little bit confusing so yeah, just to point that out so let's take a quick look at some small practical examples so we get a better feeling for it so i very quickly coded together a small example so first of all we see again have the return type with the promise type embedded into it. We here again need to be able to get the return object and construct it from a protein handle. And this calls this constructor here, where we will then set the coroutine handle. And here is again the initial suspend. We just return suspend always. And here in the final suspend that gets called when our coroutine is done, we just print a new line and then also suspend again. We don't have, we don't want to return a value. So here again, we use return void instead of return value. We again want to yield. So after we have yielded, we want to suspend always, get the value into here and then print it out. And in the case of an unhandled exception, we just want to do nothing at all. So we again have implemented the next method in our return type where we check if the coroutine is done. And if it's done, we return false. Otherwise, we just resume the coroutine and return true. That allows us to call it like this. And here in our coroutine function, we just yield some strings and then return from it when it's done. And here's how we use it. So we run that. We can see hello world gets printed. So if we remove this, then we can see that nothing happens anymore because we suspend after we yield a value. And here we can play around with suspend always and suspend never. If we also don't want to suspend when we yield a value, then we can see what happens now. Then we can see we still get the hello world even though we don't manually resume. Then having it printed out in here might be a little bit ugly. So, we can create a member variable. Let's get that here. And then we need to get a way to return it. So we need to do that in the next. 
otherwise we want to um, value from the promise type of course so we have in here we have a handle so we can use coro then in here we can access the promise and inside of the promise we have the value then let's see what happens now so that we also need to include io stream and there nothing happened because we still have suspend always so let's I suspend never so let's remove that again and let's see so as we can see now we get hello the first value back and if we do that again and let's do it one more time now we can see hello 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 so that's not what we wanted and of course we create a new core time here every time what we want to do here is to initialize the coroutine function here once and we can use call legs on it then every time and just for make it short we just call it cf here if, and of course we need to call it let's see what we get now and as you can see we get hello world and then also world again see what happens here in detail coroutine is done we want to turn a string if it's not done then we want to resume it and return the value we would usually like to have a destructor if we have a coroutine handle then we would like to destroy it and in here final suspend we would also like to set the value to nothing and now we get the expected result so as you can see coroutines are not that simple of a framework in c plus plus Hopefully we get some more library support in future standards. For now we need to write the helpers and so on ourselves. But the good thing is you write them once and then you have them. I think they are a really cool feature, but you really need to play around with them to get used to them. I myself didn't use them too much yet, but I think they have a strong use case when we want to have so to speak logical threads and then have physical threads beneath them that are the actual cpu cores um, as the worker threads and i will probably explore that concept in a future video for now this has been a short introduction i hope that has been useful and i hope we can make use of coroutines in future videos so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.